Whether you're looking for answers to specific life questions or simply hoping to become the best version of you possible, welcome to the Mental Breakdown and Psych Reg podcast, where we offer insight, information, and strategies based upon research and years of practice as psychologists. So sit back, have a listen, and get connected with our hosts, Dr. Bernie Wilkinson and Dr. Richard Marshall. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about neurofeedback, but more broadly, we're going to talk about the use of technology, computers, and computer programs in the treatment of mental health conditions. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And neurofeedback is just a great example of that because neurofeedback is now being used for treating ADHD and post-traumatic stress disorder and anxiety disorders and all kinds of things. Yep. yep. Autism. Even That's right. children with autism. Yeah. So... Um, this week, again, we're talking about the, the use of technology in mental health, mm-hmm. um, pr- in providing mental health treatment um, right. or services. So whether it's uh, teletherapy that we talked about yesterday, mm-hmm. or it's, again, neurofeedback, or mm-hmm. um, over the next couple of days, we're going to talk about different forms of psychological testing mm-hmm. on the computers. Mm-hmm. And, and neurofeedback is a, s- sort of something that bridges those two things, because neurofeedback can be used as therapy as a treatment, but it can also be used as an evaluation. Mm -hmm. Um, So what I, what I think is important to talk about here is the, the idea that we are getting to a point in, in our field, Mm -hmm. um, in in medicine in general, where computers are able to do most of the things that clinicians once did. Uh, you know, they can, and I'd, I'd probably disagree with him, but, but no, we're going to we'll get into the pros and cons time. of that. We're going to get into the pros and cons of that because I think that that's a problem. Um, and many, many times it's a problem, but we are getting to that, to that point. Yeah. I think there are things that, and we're going to talk about this, I think tomorrow and the next day, there are things that computers simply do better than we do. Some right? things, right. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I think what, what, where we're headed is there are things that humans do better mm-hmm. and there are things that machines do better. Right. Okay. And what we have to do is use the technology where it is superior, mm-hmm. uh, where, it, where it is provides an advantage mm-hmm. and rely on our, our own skills to right. do the other things where, right. where we are, where we perform better than the technology. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so what some of these programs will do, uh, thinking about neurofeedback. Right. Uh, specifically. This is a good example where the technology does something that we can't do. Right. 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 Because what, what, what happens here is you, and, and we had the opportunity to experience, to experience one of these uh, just uh, a couple of weeks ago where we were, we got hooked up to a, mm-hmm. a system and we got to um, watch a movie, a pretty good movie. Well, mine was uh, good. Mine was good. <laughs> um, you could choose whatever movie you wanted to watch. Right. And I chose I Am Legend because, I mean, why not? It's Will Smith. And it's, you know, and you chose... A documentary. Some kind of documentary. It's what, what I watch. <laughs> Good gosh. You watch what? I watch what I watch. You watch fiction and you like those characters. What are they called? <laughs> superheroes. Well, it, uh, yeah. I mean, he was a doctor in that movie, though. I know, but it's still a superhero. So, um, so yes. But but you watch the, the film. And, and while you're watching, you have these electrodes connected mm-hmm. to you. Um, not invasive. It didn't, no. You know? But it kept track of how well you were focusing and paying attention and, and, and all of that. And as you started losing attention, the the film uh, on the screen would right. get darker right. and this audio would go away. Mm-hmm. And so you have to like reorient and, right. and you know intent, mm-hmm. it, intently focus again and then right. it would come back up to bright again. Yeah, it could tell if you were really paying attention. Yeah. And um which is really cool. Yeah. You know, and that's something we we can't do. Right. I mean, uh, and what you're doing is you're actually exercising certain types of brainwave right. uh, activity. You're right. increasing certain types. It's like exercising a muscle. Right. You know, if you're lifting weights, you're exercising your bicep. You're 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 making it work harder. And that's what that's what this does, except mm-hmm. it's um, brain activity. Right. You know? And in order to pay attention, you have to increase the activity in certain regions of your mm-hmm. brain. Mm-hmm. And so this forces you to do that. Yeah. And it keeps track when you're not. Yeah. Which is cool. 
And it, I mean, it's and, and the technology is getting very, very good yeah, because you know, so superior. 10, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. probably, um, you would have to wear these big caps yeah. and it would have all of these wires connected to it and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, literally it was an electrode here and here and one on, on your ears. Right. And that was it. Yep. Yeah, it's so much easier and to do. You wear these glasses. Because when I first started to, to do that, it was mm -hmm. a much more complicated process. Right. The, the equipment, the hardware, and the software. Uh, was so much more difficult to use mm -hmm. and to interpret. Yeah. Today it's almost easy. I mean, mm -hmm. you can really learn how to do it very yeah. quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so again, what it does is it it measures some of that brain activity uh, mm -hmm. while you're performing some task, even if that if it's a relatively passive mm -hmm. task of watching mm -hmm. a, a film, and it helps you. Um, it, it just brings to your awareness when you're right. focusing and when you're not focusing, mm -hmm. and and what. You know, if you're doing a, a protocol to look at anxiety, it will look mm -hmm. at your ability to relax and to calm, right. you know, some of that uh, excessive mm -hmm. activity. But it's really, um, again, I, I think you said it best just a moment ago when you said, you know, that's where technology can do things that's that we can't so do. so superior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just, you know, there's no way that we, we can can't measure that mm -hmm. stuff. No, we can't measure. We, we have we, we just can't do it. Right, mm -hmm. right. No. And this is, so it's sort of like, you've all heard of biofeedback, mm -hmm. you know, where you get um, skin conduction or heartbeat. You right. Know? Well, this is similar to that, except it's brain waves instead right. of heartbeat and, and skin response. It's brain waves, okay? The brain produces four characteristic waves. And mm -hmm. uh, people with ADHD, for example, don't produce enough of one of those. Mm -hmm. They don't produce enough energy in those areas of the brain. So this teaches... A person how to do that right so it's just like exercise you're going to the gym mm -hmm. to exercise here you're going to the lab to exercise your brain yeah mm -hmm. and, and you can you can feel it like right when, yeah. when you finish yeah, yeah. um you know I, I i found that right afterwards i was felt pretty good but then mm -hmm. I, I was i felt myself getting a little bit fatigued Relaxed. a little bit right. and it's because you know it it, it is it a workout it, right. it kind of mm -hmm. it is a workout yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but it's really you know, if you if you did the the entire protocol, which was you know mm -hmm. the one that we were doing, would be twenty right. sessions. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people report wonderful yeah, it results. Takes, it takes fifteen to thirty uh, half hour sessions mm -hmm. to to feel permanent changes in right. your brain. You don't you don't do it with one session. It is a training program, mm -hmm. um, and clearly it's fifteen to thirty sessions. So it is a training right. program, but it's really a really an, um, a promising. Yeah, technology. Right. Uh, for people who can't take medi medication or don't want to take medication or want to enhance what medication is doing, mm -hmm. uh, this would be a wonderful way to do it. Right. So. One of the, you know, kind of going back to the statement that I made at the beginning of today's podcast that you disagreed with, because um, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in tomorrow's podcast as well. You know, what I think is is concerning about some of this is that a lot of professionals are handing over these kinds of you know you know some of our assessments and some of our evaluations and some of our treatments right. handing it over to technology mm -hmm. And, and rely, overly relying on the technology right. and, right. and and I think that that's really problematic a, 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 a neurologist friend of ours mm -hmm. you know once said that you know uh, today's neurologists would have a difficult time identifying a seizure if it was happening right, right in front of them unless they had the readout right. from the from the yeah. EEG right because you and, wouldn't notice it right yeah. and in you know again we, we mentioned this yesterday our training was very um, old school was was you know very clinical so you know we we kind of worked really hard early in our training to pick up some of those some of that awareness, some of that understanding, some of that, you know, whether you want to call them soft signs or just uh, observations that you can make mm -hmm. and you can see certain things uh, about a person um, as you're talking to them. I think a lot of clinicians today aren't doing that. They're, they're either not trained in that way mm -hmm. or they don't care to, mm, right. I don't want to make no, it up. But, but we've been taught to rely on, on lab mm -hmm. results. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the best example of that is... Um, statin, the drugs for mm -hmm. um, cholesterol. Right. Um, before statins were invented, the normal cholesterol level was 200 and something. Right. Well, now that we have drugs that will lower it, normal statin levels 
have been reduced mm -hmm. only because we have the drugs to me to to, right. uh, to measure it more precisely. So um, you know, I think we 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 are training ourselves. The training programs rely more and more on right. these precise measurements, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than clinical. Ob what you're talking about is. We were trained to do clinical observations. Mm -hmm. You look at a patient and talk to a patient and make these right. observations based on experience and knowledge mm -hmm. rather than just getting a printout from a computer and saying, oh, right. you have high blood pressure right? or you have diabetes or you have uh, high cholesterol. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and we're finding that there's more and more, many more nuances right. to, to the practice of medicine in general, but certainly mm -hmm. psychology, uh, that requires some of that clinical... And, and we're going to be talking about assessment uh, mm -hmm. tomorrow, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. and so and it's a good good segue to that because you have to a clinician, whether it's a physician or a psychologist or whatever, a clinician has to be able to look beyond numbers mm -hmm. to think about the person, right. the person who's being measured, right. and that's what we keep advocating here is that you have to you have to know something beyond the numbers. The number right. itself. Um, is simply a piece of information that you use to um, mm -hmm. construct a bigger picture. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And with that, we will pause until pause. tomorrow. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and tomorrow we'll talk more about uh, psychological testing right. uh, on and computers. Testing and assessment. Yes. So We'll right. distinguish those two tomorrow. Yes, we will. Until then, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid. Thanks for sharing this episode of the Mental Breakdown and PsychRidge podcast. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel where you will find all of our previous podcasts and much more. We would be honored if you would become a patron through patreon.com where any donation you can manage will go to the development and creation of more content. Just visit patreon.com slash the mental breakdown for more information. Thanks again for listening. Have an awesome day and we look forward to being back in your feed tomorrow morning.